Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Pastor Tony Brooke Brown, and you know how we do it. We get this word so that we can exercise it through the day, meditate on it, apply it to our life, walk in it, confess it, share it with others so we can get spiritually fit. So we are coming today with a word that I am piggybacking actually off of a word that I shared with our outreach team on Saturday. So I want to uh, just touch on that because I think this is a word that we need to hear, that we need to exercise. Because remember, we have got to get ourselves um, spiritually fit, spiritually strong, get this word in us so that we can share this word with others and be effective and be productive. And don't forget uh, that if you haven't gotten your sit-ups book, that you can hit the link below. You can download the book on your electronic device so that you can get your spiritual regimen together. And also that what goes along with this uh, word for the day is also our morning prayer, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, Instagram, and the phone line. That information is also underneath this YouTube video. So we have Monday through Friday prayer. Then we have the word here on YouTube. And we also have Wednesday night uh, spiritual warfare class on Facebook, Instagram, and on the phone line as well. So today we want to get straight into uh, the word. And to, the word that we are focused on today is sober. The word is sober. And I know oftentimes when we say the word sober, we are specifically focused on someone who is not intoxicated, somebody who is um, clear-minded, somebody who is not... Um, you know, uh, doing, you know, haven't had any um, alcohol or any type of drug or anything like that. But I also want to look at a couple of other definitions as we look at the scriptures today because we are instructed to be sober. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we just don't go around and drink or use drugs? Well, no, that's not what it means. I want to look at a couple of the definitions um, as we are looking in the verses of scripture. First of all, I'm looking at this word sober, and when we look at, there's a few words that's used for it in the New Testament, and one of them is napho, and it's spelled N-E-P-H-O. And so this word, napho, and it has a little mark over the E and the O, um, but this word means to abstain from wine, so it means to, to not have alcohol, but it also means um, I'm calm. It means to be watchful. It means to be attentive. It means to be observant. It means to be aware. It means to be circumspect, which means wise, cautious, careful, guarded. So when you think about being sober, you think I'm calm. I'm watchful, paying attention, alert, aware of what's going on. I'm walking wise. I'm being cautious, careful, and I'm guarded. So now it's more than just not being intoxicated. Then it also means free from illusion, from the intoxicating influences of sin. So not just uh, from the intoxicating influence of alcohol when people say they're under the influence But this is talking about from the intoxicating influences of sin like the impact of a selfish passion or a greed So now you're thinking about lusting after things the influence of sin um, being, you know, your mind messed up because you're focused on something that you're lusting after, that you're desiring uh, to have that you shouldn't have, that's sinful, that's ungodly, also means having presence of mind. It means uh, to be, have clear judgment, enabling someone to be temperate or self-controlled. Um, it means to have one's wits, faculties about them. Um, and so the opposite of this would be to be irrational. So I want to look at some verses of scripture on this first um, word and the definitions that we've looked at that really let us know it means to be calm, collected in spirit, to be temperate, which means we have self-control, um, to be circumspect, wise. And so uh, let's look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Get your pen, get your paper, get your highlighter. Make sure you write down these verses because remember, I'm giving you a foundation to start with for the day, but you have to exercise it. You have to do your spiritual workout so that you can get spiritually fit. And so um, 
in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm looking at verses 4 through 8, and it reads, But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. I'm sorry. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Then it says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. No. So now there's a few things that we're looking at. It's saying you as believers, all you who believe in Christ as the Savior and acknowledge him as God's son, those that are believers, it says, are not in spiritual darkness. Now, that's where we used to be, walking in darkness, which is really representing sin, separation from God, because God is light. Okay? So, um, we're not in spiritual darkness, nor held by its power that the day of judgment would overtake us by surprise like a thief. No, the things that are coming are not going to surprise the believers that are walking in day because we can see, it says, for you are all sons of light and sons of day. So we can see where it's not going to come up on us as a surprise. Why? Because we're alert, because we are cautious, because we are calm, because we are watchful. And so it says we don't belong to the night nor the darkness. No longer do we belong in darkness. And so it says, let us not sleep. Let's not be in spiritual indifference, you know, a spiritual slumber. You know, we, you know we're supposed to be awakened in the light. You know, we were spiritually dead, spiritually asleep, but now in Christ, we have to be awake, alert, and watchful. So it says, let's not sleep in a spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does, but let us keep wide awake, alert, cautious. Let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, wise. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. So it's in the darkness. We don't know what's going on in the dark. You can't see what's going on in the dark. People that live in darkness are walking in traps and in snares of the enemy, following their flesh. When things come upon them, it is unaware. They're unaware of it. When the day of judgment comes, they won't be ready. But we're called to be light. So we have to be sober-minded. It says those that sleep, sleep at night. Those that are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we believers belong to the day, let's be sober. Let's have on the breastplate of faith and love, a helmet, you know, uh, the hope and confident assurance of salvation. For God has not destined us to incur his wrath. That That is, he didn't select us to condemn us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So some of this I'm reading from the Amplified. It breaks it down. So as you're studying and doing your spiritual fitness today, look at some other versions. Look at the Amplified. Look at the New Living Translation. Break it down. Make sure that you have understanding. So now this is telling us let's keep awake, alert, and cautious right? So that that day of judgment doesn't come upon us unawares and we're not ready. We have to be ready. We have to be in the light. We have to see what's going on in the spiritual. Know that this is a spiritual walk, a spiritual life, a spiritual race. And so then let's look at, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let me get there. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Amen. And when we look at these verses of scripture, there's something that I want us to realize um, as we're going through the scriptures that to be sober as we're looking through this, and it means to be watchful and cautious and calm and, you know, all these different things. It lets us know when we're irrational, when we're thinking with a carnal mind, when we are out of control, when we have no self-control, when we're not spirit controlled then there's no difference between us and those that are intoxicated with the drug or a drink. Let me show you. Now, also, we're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want us to, we're going to begin in verse 1. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with, with all long suffering and doctrine. 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, when we look at these verses of scripture, the focus is verse 5. Because in this, it's telling, you know, um, Paul is telling Timothy, listen, preach the word in season, out of season. In other words, no matter what's going on, no matter who's opposing you, no matter what's coming against you, no matter what it looks like, you have to always be ready to share that word, speak that word, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That means whatever you have to endure, endure it, but continue in sound doctrine. It says because there's a time coming, and it is now, when people don't endure sound doctrine, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't, if they're don't. they looking for somebody after their own lust, somebody who is going to minister something to them that makes them feel good about being in sin, being indifferent, being spiritually asleep, being separated from God, continuing in unforgiveness, continuing in anger, continuing in uh, partying and reveling and, and continuing in lying and cheating and whatever riotous lifestyle drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be. They're looking for somebody who is going to give them a word for their itching ears. And it says they shall turn away their ears from the truth and turn to fables. But here is the focus in verse 5. In verse 5, the word watch is the same word that is used for the word sober in the past in the previous scriptures we read. So when it says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. When it says, but watch thou in all things, endure infliction, that word watch is the same thing. It means be calm. It means be alert. It means be wise, be cautious, be guarded. And so now we need to realize that we, um, you know, some of these verses that say watch are the same ones that mean sober. So this verse obviously doesn't just mean not being intoxicated. It means get your mind right. Be cautious and be guarded. Watchful. And so when you look at this in the Amplified, it's telling us... Um, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it's not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable. This is saying whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether you're welcome or unwelcome, stay in that word, preach the word, teach the truth. It says correct those who err in doctrine or behavior, warn those who are in sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience. And faithful teaching because the time is going to come when people won't tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenge them with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold. So they'll look for somebody who's going to support how they're living instead of looking for the truth. And they'll turn their ears away from the truth and wander off into myths. Man-made fictions will accept the unacceptable. But you, it says, here's that word for watch. It says, but as for you, be clear-headed. In every situation, stay calm and cool and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. So we have to be clear-minded. We have to stay calm and cool and steady. You have to be in the spirit. The word says, don't be drunken with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, we have to have our minds together. Look with me in 1 Peter. In 1 Peter, we're going to look at chapter 1. Well, actually... Let's look at, yeah, let's look at chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read this from the Amplified um, first. We are looking down, let's go to verse 13. And this is what it says in the Amplified. It says in verse 13, so prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit 
steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Live as obedient children of God. Do not be conformed to the evil desires which governs you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. So here, it's telling you, prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God. This is telling us we have to be obedient. We have to be surrendered to God. The only way that we can do this is if we have our minds right, spiritual minds, sober minds, in spirit. We're self-disciplined. That means that we are spirit-filled, spirit-led. We're walking holy. The word says, be holy for I'm holy. This is what God says. And so we can't walk like we used to walk. We can no longer be conformed to the evil desires that used to govern our lives. The things that we used to do. Because our mind has changed. Because now we have to lose our mind. And we have to have the mind of Christ. So now, when we're looking at this sober-minded, this is being renewed in our mind. This is being calm in the spirit. This is us following after the word of God and the will of God. And the last verse that I want to look at is in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to look at this both in the King James and anything that I just only read um, in another version, like I just read those verses in the Amplified, you need to go back and read the King James. I only went there first for time's sake um, in not reading both. But we have to always refer to the King James. I only go to the other verses to break it down. Amen. So in the King James, 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 7, 6, I'm sorry. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That, you may ex that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, this is first of all telling us, because before this it tells us how God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So it says, so humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season. We know that we have to be humble. God said, if the word lets us know, Jesus lets us know. If we don't humble ourselves, God will humble us. Amen. So we have to humble ourselves. And when God is, when, when God is ready, in due time and due season, he will exalt us. But it tells us casting our cares on him, why? Because he cares for us. So now we give our cares over to God and we can be sober, we can be vigilant because the devil, this is the focus, the devil, the adversary, our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to eat us up. He wants to tear us apart. He wants to destroy our life. He wants to steal our dreams. He wants to tear up our families. He wants to devour us. So we have to be sober and we have to be vigilant. And so when we look at this verse of scripture, we have to realize that we are being called to have a spiritual mind, to be well-balanced and self-disciplined. This means we are walking in the word of God, in the light, focused on Christ. Our mind stayed on God so that we can walk this walk, so that we can walk in holiness, so that the enemy has no place with us. Though he may be looking to take us out of the will of God, we have to refuse to allow ourselves to be able to be deviated off the path that God has given us. That requires us just like a person who is drunken, a person that's intoxicated. They're doing things they wouldn't do. They are not clear-headed. They can't make good decisions. They're all over the place. They're saying,
saying things they wouldn't normally say. They're not thinking about things that make sense, that are rational, that are going to be safe. They do things that are going to harm them, things that could harm other people. They think they can do things they can't do. They get behind the wheel and they drive because they can't make good decisions. They can't make healthy decisions. It's the same thing in the spiritual. If we don't have a spiritual mind, but we have a kernel mind, we begin to think like the world. We begin, instead of thinking like the word and thinking spiritual and thinking, um, having the mind of Christ and being humble and being submitted to God and walking in obedience and walking holy, we began to operate in the flesh and we began to think with a kernel mind. So we began to act like the world, live like the world. We want the wor what the world wants. We lust after what the world lusts after. And then we look for messages that are going to make us comfortable in our sin. But this is telling us, no, listen, you got to be well balanced, self-disciplined, alert, cautious at all times because the enemy, the devil, is going around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking whom he can eat up, devour. But the verse 9 in the Amplified says, but resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable. Knowing the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. Listen, we have to know that God is with us and that all are going through the same. We're all going through test trials and tribulations. The enemy wants to devour all of us, but we have to make a decision that we're not going to be spiritually intoxicated by having a carnal mind, but we're going to be overtaken and under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And so we're letting the Spirit of God take over in us, the Word of God take over in us. And so we're walking in a peace and a calm because we've cast our cares on the Lord. We don't fight like like the world fights. We don't act like the world acts. We walk in the spirit representing the spiritual kingdom of God. And so this is what we have to remember is that if you see somebody drunken, you see somebody who is high and you think they're out of their mind, look at them. They're walking crazy. They're doing dangerous things. They're causing problems. But it's the same thing for us. Just like they can end up in prison because they made a bad decision. They can end up, you know, losing, you know, their family, losing, you know, some things that, that was purpose for them. It's the same thing with us in the spiritual. If we allow ourselves to, to walk unwise, indifferent, irrational in the spirit. And not submitted to God, we can find ourselves in spiritual bondage, in darkness again, lost, separated from God. And this is not what God has purpose for us. So now we have to focus on being sober-minded. And before we close out, I just want to look at the other um, definition and give you some verses that for you to look up. Because this other definition of sober is going to be your homework. This definition says safety-minded. It says having a sober outlook that reflects true balance. This word is sophronio. Sophronio. And it means to be of a sound mind, to be temperate, to exercise self-control. It means for the believer to think shrewdly. It reflects what God defines as true moderation. This God-controlled perspective blends the extremities of truth on both sides of the matter. The whole word family comes, the whole word family, the root, sophro, the first part of that word, comes from two words, sus which means safe, and friend, which means what regulates life. So this is safety. This is what regulates life. And so it's just like an opera singer, it says, that controls the length or the quality of their tones by their diaphragm, which even controls our ability to breathe and moderates heartbeat. This regulates, um, brings safety to the body, keeping it properly controlled. So it's the same thing with us being sober-minded and us thinking of this word, that we have to make sure that this God-controlled perspective blends the extremities of truth on both sides of a matter. Everything is reflecting what God defines is true. So now we are walking in truth in our right mind. And what I want you to look at are some verses of scripture that you can write down and study today. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15, and you got to read around these verses. Mark 5, 15, and this one, in this verse, it says, in his right mind. This is the same word that's used for sober in this verse. The same word means sober that is in his right mind. Luke 8, 35, the same thing. It's in his right mind. This is the same thing. It's the same story. 
In Romans 12, verse 3, write it down. Read that verse. And it's really talking about this sound uh, judgment, this sober-mindedness. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 13. Titus 2 and 6. 1 Peter 4 and 7. So these are talking about being sensible, being self-controlled, being of sound mind, being in your right mind. So this, this is where you look at this. It lines up with being intoxicated in the natural when you're not in your right mind, when you're not sober minded, when you're not vigilant, when you're not watchful, when you're not cautious, when you're not self-controlled. So we need to be spirit controlled, which means we stay in the word, live by the spirit, focused on God and walking in his will. And so I want you to go back and study all of those verses of scripture. That's your spiritual exercise today to get spiritually fit, to have a sound, sober mind so that the enemy cannot come in. We give no place to the devil. We are walking after the spirit. We're going to say a prayer. Don't forget to meet us in the morning 6 a.m eastern standard time for prayer and then um get your word every morning monday through friday amen father in the name of jesus we just thank you and we praise you we thank you for your word we thank you lord god for renewing our mind through your word as we meditate on it day and night we thank you that our minds are being changed being uh self-controlled lord god as we are led by your spirit that we don't do what we used to do that we don't follow after the rudiments of this world and we don't follow after the things that we used to walk in in darkness lord god but now we walk in the light and we follow after christ our mind on you our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith we ask that you order our steps direct our our path and guide us and lead us in the way you would have us to go we love you and we honor you we praise you god for who you are what you've done what you're doing and what you're about to do in jesus name amen god bless you love you to life hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications when i upload <clears throat> the sit-ups have a blessed day in the lord and let god use you today stay sober in mind calm cautious wise watchful alert god bless you